Good morning and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Perspective. My name is Ango Bali. Today I shall be sitting in for the Ango, the usual Ango, Mr. Tony Anabi. Uh, today on Perspective, we shall be taking a personal time of the Larry House of Representative by election. The by election took place last Saturday and it was as a result of a vacancy created uh, due to the passing away of the former incumbent that is Honorable Suleiman Larry and um, during the election result has been given and assessment also has been made too mostly by some of the political parties that partook in it so today this morning we shall be taking a look an assessment a, uh, by postmortem i mean we shall be making an assessment what took place how did it go and I have to me with me in the studio to discuss this. Uh, the Secretary General, Polling Unit Ambassadors of Nigeria, Puan, Ambassador John Yayok. Thank you so much, sir. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. My name is Ango Bani. Just before we take a look or an assessment of the election, let's give you a background on how it went. On the 14th day of August 2021, that the election was contested, that the candidates received the following votes. Engineer Ahmed M. Munir, APC, 34,000. 958 Abga 125 Barista Ibrahim Usman PDP 16,271 Suleiman Dalami Lirin PRP 226 Salim Malami Abkarim YPP 294 That engineer Ahmed Emonil of APC having satisfied the requirements of the law is hereby declared the winner and Elected. My name is Malam Nikailo Abubaka, Chairman of the Party Advisory Council of Nigeria, IPAC Kaduna State, also Chairman of Young Progressive Party, YPP Kaduna State. Let me appreciate and commend INEC for the conduct of this election and also appreciate and commend the skill which most especially the Nigeria Police, DSS, and the Civil Defense, Civil Defense Corps. It showed to us that the INEC is full independent, also the security, they are all independent. Because looking at the conduct of the election, the election is full free, fair, and credible election. Okay. Yes. The turnout, how would you rate it? Uh, actually, the turnout is low. The turnout is low. Considering the fact that the total number of estimated voters, 231,532. Mm. Meanwhile, the total number of people that participated in the election, total number of votes, 52,997. Yes. Uh, total valid vote at 51,874. Well, total of rejected vote at 712. So, what's your assessment? Uh, you know, as a tradition, every by election always come with long turnout. So, it's not a new thing or a surprise to the politicians or to the INEC. It's just it's a normal. Mm. Actually, but the turnout is very poor. Comparing it with uh, Sabongari State Assembly by election. Uh, looking at the Sabongari uh, State Assembly, it's not a large constituency like this, uh, the Rayon. Yeah. Because the Rayon is a local government constituency, the whole local government. But Sabongari one is just some word, I think it's just uh, seven. Seven words. So you cannot compare it with uh, 11 words. But the turnout in the uh, Sabongari is much higher than the turnout in the Rayon local government. Okay. The Sabongari, it was something like this 16% or about 20% of their. Below. So, yes. 
How would you rate this one? What percentage is given on this? And this one, out of 100%. I think this one is around, it's ranging up to 14-15% in turnout. Right. So, looking forward to the local government election, what needs to be done to improve the water apathy? Yeah, for them to participate in the qualities. Yes. What needs to be done is let me first of all call the attention of the political parties and the politicians. The politicians, they should just go out and campaign to the electorate. Let them come out and vote for their choice. And I'm also, because the report that reached me yesterday when I was in Delhi, if it is true, I'm not happy with that being me as the attack chairman, that some of the political parties are going up and down and buying votes, which is very important not to assist our democracy. So maybe by Tuesday or Wednesday, I will call an emergency meeting of all the members of our IPAC. The media, the journalists that monitored the election observed that they was voted by. Didn't you take note of that? Yes, that's what I'm trying to tell you. That the report that reached me that there is vote by, which is it will not help our democracy. That is why, being as an IPAC chairman and umbrella of our political parties, I'm going to call an emergency meeting to sit down. I will call at the attention of the party chairman that this thing is true based on what media are seeing. They should please stop that. Vote by will not assist us in uh, to see that the progress of our democracy. Allow the citizens, the electorate let them go and vote for what they want to vote because if you put it for somebody that behind you at the end if that person didn't work for you you have the right to see anything that you want to see during but in a situation whereby you buy a vote from the electorate and again you win that election so that electorate is not expecting you to do anything to you anything you have is for your own because you have already buy him so i'm even calling the attention of the electorate again they should please no matter how the condition it is let them try and resist they should not collect money from politicians before voting them now this is less than weeks to the local government election and up to now there is no any signs of sensitization by CASICOM, the body saddled with responsibility of conducting the election. We're talking about jingle or any other thing you've not seen. So what is your advice? Okay. In that one, the preparation for the awareness campaign is already in the top now. Because, yes, I'm moving anything on to the awareness campaign will start up. SICOM will start the awareness campaign from on the of this month. The campaign is going to the grassroots because the EVM machine will be taken from the INEC office. They will take it to the bureau's polling unit for test running, which they will do the awareness to the electorate that this is how we are going to pass the votes. This is the political party that are going to pass. This is the do this, 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 this one. I'm hoping it's from on the bureau of this month. Thank you for so you are welcome. Really, I was there the day before the election and the day of the election and the day, and day after the election. So I have seen all what has happened and really I have to commend the effort of the security agencies in some extent and the Independent National Electoral Commission INEC okay. for their participation. Only participation without bias. Okay. For, the, for example, INEC they did their best. Okay. About almost 80% of what the INEC did were really satisfied with it. And the security also 70% were satisfied with it. Where they use the security it is escort of some government officials. It is there they use some security. So their security is to treat some of the electorate or PDP officials. For example, we have a day of work where Excellency went and started to uh, start sharing money and distributing money with the other or buy. Who is the Excellency? Well, uh, government official. I cannot mention him because what, uh, we have the video. Yes, okay. So they went and started distributing money to buy. Also, one of our agents covering with his handset. So they had their security agent arrested that person, started beating him and arrested him, snatched the wire from him and destroyed So they went with him until they didn't release him until after the election. The election. So these are the treatments of our members who sleep from the government official. And I think also there are some places where after the election, that is when counting, they use the security to distract or to hijack the materials and change. The result there are. But these are minor. What really just is the board voting, which the government official of the party, the ruling party, definitely they use money to buy vote. And when they use money to buy vote, I can't blame them because that is their only opportunity to have vote from people because people are in absolute poverty, abject poverty. So once they see money, for example, they used to buy votes more 1,500, and some women are even giving my give, which will have all the document or the all the, the video where they this is my gift, collect my gift and cast their words to the APC. They did that also, but it is the point of the people because you cannot sell your vote because looking at the position you are, you are in a hardship position. The government that did not provide any essential amenities for you, the government that did not provide security for you, the government that did not provide any, didn't provide anything for you, uh, any for the infrastructure problem for you, and they came and gave you part of your money instead of you to continue collecting your share and you want to vote for them, they collect 
the money and they voted for the APC. So this is what we transfer in that, that election. The IPAC chairman in Kailu said he equally got that report true of what buying. Yes, absolutely. We have evidence of what buying. We have evidence. Okay, now let's talk about the turnout of voters. There are serious voter apathy. Low turnout. What is your assessment for me? Let's talk of low turnout. Yes, as I said earlier, the turnout of the election is absolutely zero because uh, people, people lose confidence in casting their vote. Why? Because of what happened during the 2019 general election, particularly here in the northern part of the country, where people have their full hope and expectation to the to the president, to the party, to the ruling party, particularly the president, Mr. Muhammad Bahari. They voted. They came out massively during that time for them. Even the people, the people, the old kind people, they both came in it. Kind of person came out massively to go to Bahari. We do hope that they will have better Nigeria or have better infrastructure or they have an input development. But after casting their vote to do bring this government into power, what they expect, they have higher expectations, but at the end of it, they have zero. Instead of them, the government to keep on moving, but no, they are going backwards. Why are they going backwards? People expected that for the food stock, for example, journal has at that time, back of price used to sell at the 8,500 or 7,500. Now, how much is the back of price? More than 22,000. So, when we look at this, they will provide employment. What is the rate of employment now? This is the government that people voted for them. So they sack people. For example, in Pernod's team, they sack teachers, they sack local government staff, they sack district head, village head, and their staff. They sack this, they sack this. So this are the continuation of this. It cannot be any for long as it will take us a very long time before mentioning all this that people, that the expectation of people. So this is why people don't have hope that even if they vote for somebody that they think it will be like the other one. This is what turned out during the election day. Yes, talking about the poor low turnout. Low turnout, yes. Which is as a result of the lack of hope in this government. The by election in Lere has been won and lost. Now we have 19 days to the local government election. <laughs> How is PDP preparing for the local government election? Well, we are already prepared and uh, for us, and this election that has been conducted in the local government, it is an opener for us that where there are mistakes, we should be ready to amend where we think they will have some mistakes. So, definitely, we have hope because if you look at what happened in Lede, almost the whole government, the governor, acting governor, SSG, commissioner of all commissioners, all local government councils, administrators, all state assembly members, all these, all the national assembly members of APC, they went and gathered in Lede only just to ensure that they occupy that seat. They get, they get, they win that seat. They spend a lot of money, which is not possible. During the local government election, everybody will be at his own local government. Okay. So it will be left for the people to decide on who and who they are going to cast their vote to. Now, the PDP said it makes an observation. It's doing some compilation. Do we expect official report or official response from the PDP national election? Of course. We summon for a stakeholders meeting on Tuesday, and after the meeting, we'll bring out our position. Okay, welcome back. Um, this is more like a background of the election that took place, the by-election that took place in Lere last Saturday, that's the 14th of August, to fill in the vacant position of the House of Representatives. Um, the voices that you heard first was the returning officer, Professor Adamoda, who declared the result accordingly. Then followed by the Cardinal State Chairman of Interpatry Advisory Council, Mala Mikhailu Abubakar, who is equally the State Chairman of Young Progressive Party. The Young Progressive Party participated in the election too. And the last voice was that of the State Secretary of the PDP, in the person of Honorable Ibrahim, Ibrahim Ali Wusono. Um, the PDP is the main opposition that um, lost the election to the PDP. We tried to make concerted effort to get across to the APC to get their reaction to. Even, be, even though being the winner, they too, uh, we deserve to hear their own uh, response. But it did not yield any positive um, note. We tried to get across to the state acting secretary, that is in the person of Yaya party, he could not respond equally to the state publicity secretary in the person of 
Sale su sono, there was no response. So uh, the work was go on. So in the studio here, like I've introduced, I have Ambassador Solomon Yayok. <coughs> Ambassador Solomon Yayok is the State uh, Secretary of Puan, that is Pauline Unit Ambassadors of Nigeria. So as you can hear from the background, the assessment they have given INEC a pass mark. That is, um, they've given up, they've given thumb up to INEC that INEC has performed well within their purview. The security too performed well within its purview. So, what would you say does the assessment given does it correspond with the work? Or your job as an observer, what did you observe? Did your observation correspond with their own assessment? Okay, uh, thank you for, for having me. Well, uh, I would like to start uh, with this. Uh, definitely, we can't shy away from this fact that uh, INEC has really did their best, they have done well in the major aspect where. Uh, they needed to play their roles and uh, they have access uh, INEC in this uh, uh, in this election and uh, I also give uh, a thumbs up to INEC in the, these areas of uh, timeliness if you look at it in some elections there are some polling units that elections will start not as the at the stipulated time. Sometimes elections will start by uh, 11. In some places, elections start uh, uh, 10. In some places, you won't even see the people there. You only see the results on social media or the returning officer announcing the results. But uh, in this, uh, we have seen INEC display a, a, a clear road of, uh, of taking up responsibility of uh of doing their job as it is expected for them to do in most of the sample polling units uh we visited we have seen where polls are start polls started uh, exactly 8 30 8 o'clock accreditation started and uh it's very real in most of the elections we have in this country and also in this part of the country where you see elections starting exactly 8.30 or accreditation starting exactly 8.30. Well, INEC did well in that aspect. So we give a kudos to INEC for, for that. And again, the cat readers, we also give kudos to INEC because the cat readers, are in most of the polling unit visited, the cat readers functions well. We have full batteries uh, all through, except one we also met uh, uh, its it's the issue of uh, the battery running down, but it's about one o'clock where the election is almost uh, coming to an end. So, I neck, I neck, uh, kudos to I neck. Okay, um, still an observation. Mm -hmm. Transmission of election result, how was, was it done? Manual or electronic? Well, uh, as uh, an observer, one of the things that we pay so much attention on is... Uh, the functions of the cat readers and the uh, issue of transmission of uh, results. We have the result sheets where everything after collation, uh, after counting in the polling unit, it will be announced and written over there. For well, the issue of transmission of uh, result uh, uh, through the cat reader, it is something that uh, the, the person in charge of that cat reader will do to the INEC is either to its server or so, but definitely we have seen uh, uh, result sheets and we are written in the polling units and we are announced and taken to the or was, or was it a combination of both? It is, definitely. Okay, is. yeah, one major observation that was made uh, by this respondent, uh, low turnout of voters. We have an estimated registered voters of 231,532 um, 
accredited voters stood at 52,897, while valid vote accounted at 51,874. Now, uh, a per, um, an average of 22.8% of voter turnout. What assessment mm -hmm. on the low voter turnout? Meanwhile, the Interpatriate Advisory Council chairman said that it is normal would voter turnout to be recorded in a by-election. Is it normal? Well, uh, to me, I, I a bit disagree with that uh, notion that it is normal in by-election you have to have a, a low turnout. If you compare elections here in this part of the country and also uh, the eastern part of the country, or will I say the western part of the country, you will see there will not be different between the election and the by-election, the election proper and also the by-election uh, 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 season. But, well, it's do though I look at it as a as a, a process whereby even the political parties themselves don't have keen interest on by elections or we also also look at it as if uh, there are something some kind of uh, laxity in the sight of the candidates and also though we have sampled some people and asked them questions why is it so some say they have lost confidence in in the system that even if they voted for their right candidate the same thing will still play out. What play out before will still play out. So that means the political party has to go out whenever there is by election. The political parties has to go out, converse to vote, build the mind of the people, and also INEC needs to do something. Sensitize the people and make the people have trust on the system again. Because the people look at it, okay, the people look at it as if, okay, uh, INEC is. Uh, will be biased but uh, I think I think also need to do more so that we will have uh, a, a good turnout whenever by elections are conducted. Thank you Ambassador John Yayok Solomon, Secretary General Polling Unit Ambassadors of Nigeria Puan. Um, we shall be right back after this uh, commercial timeout. Welcome back. We are still on to your program perspective and I am Ango Bali sitting in for your usual host, Twain Alabi. Today on Perspective, we are looking at, uh, we are taking a post time of the Leray House of Representative by election. And we'll be in the studio, I have Ambassador John Solomon Yayok. He's the Secretary General, Polling Unit Ambassadors of Nigeria, Puan. Uh, in the first segment, we've had assessment done by the opposition political parties who gave the INEC a pass mark for conducting a free, fair, and credible election. Not only did INEC, the same pass mark was extended to the security agencies. However, there were observations that were made, uh, like the Hausa person would say, the Hausa proverb, Seba Arasa Nono Aruga. Um, low turnout of voters, that is, voter party was recorded, we have an average of 22.8% turnout for the election. And uh, vote buying too was observed, but the two parties mentioned it. And like I said earlier, we tried to get across to the ruling APC that won the election so that we get their own uh, input or their own thought, their own observation, their own comment at the elections, but uh, it could not yield any ground. So, Ambassador Paul, uh, John Yayok, you took part in the Sabongari by election. Exactly. That took place about two, two months ago in uh, June, June 19. So, if we are to do a comparative analysis on the, I mean, the Sabongari equally recorded uh, voter apathy, something between 16 or uh, below 20% turnout. So how will you compare the two? Is there any improvement on the rate? Well, uh, I will say in this note that uh, 
Sabangari putting it together. Sabangari uh, in Leri we have uh, 11 words, yes. while in Sabangari we have less than that. Seven words. Okay, seven mm -hmm. words. Yes. So, uh, though in the seven words we have uh, more people coming out, even while you go to the collation center, you see more people. Uh, uh, at the gates, people inside, people outside. The street was completely shut down. Uh, people were eager to hear who wins. People were escorting ballot boxes from pulling units to the collection center. Uh, we have a good turn out there, but uh, putting the figures together, here we have 11 and here we have 7. So you can't, uh, if you want to put it on a scale, you can compare 11 words and also uh, seven, uh, seven words. words. But uh, the Sabangari experience, it turned out that is uh, uh, well uh, commendable. And uh, the people came out a mass to vote for the candidate they so uh, desire to become, uh, uh, to take up the mantle. And... Uh, yeah, go ahead. Okay. And uh, in the, in the, in the, in Leri, uh, the, the case is uh, totally low because in the polling unit you see uh, not more than uh, 50 people, not more than 30 people. Hardly you see in a polling unit where a full uh, 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 booklet was exhausted. Okay, yeah, in Sabongari, it was at the beginning of the rainy season. Mm -hmm. Now in Lere, we are at the probably the middle, the mm -hmm. center of the raining season. Could the raining season equally uh, have been something that uh, affected the turnout? Probably people went out to farm. Meanwhile, in Sabongari, we didn't hear um, cries about vote buying. But in Lere is the major issue, even by the two major, uh, two political parties that was forward. And then equally for journalists that monitor the election. What was your observation since you are an observer? Did you observe vote buying or you didn't say anything? Yes, uh, we we came across that in, in one of the polling units too. And uh, there was a bit rancor among the people during sharing the money. Uh, we have to come in and intervene and uh, also talk with the security personnel that uh, you are here while this thing is happening. Uh, somebody, uh, one of the candidates gave out money to share the other polling units and uh, some people, uh, the individual that had the money with him had to run away. He ran away with the money into hiding and uh, the place was so rowdy. People were accusing each other at see if there was going to be a, there was a little uh, crisis within the people there. But when we came in, we intervened in the situation and uh, we make sure that everywhere is calm. And uh, though there are some people there that decided that since the money did not get to us, we are not voting. And, and what the, Okay. And what do you think inform the electorate, you know, to not get their votes to decide who will lead them for what that will be given to them temporarily that will soon um, finish? What well, do you think inform that? Well, you look at it, the people, the people... Uh, uh, have zeroed their mind on the on the on the people vying for positions in their locality because after the election they won't see them again. So that's why some of them look at it. Okay, now instead of us going for for a better candidate because they are looking at it, there's no more a better candidate. So whosoever comes with money, I will take it, vote for him, or either not vote for him and move my way. Because that's, that will only be my own uh, national cake at that point. Now, but that's not the solution. Now, I have to observe this. Yes. The candidate that won the election, that is in the person of engineer Ahmad yes, Manir. Ma Manir. Yes. Um, he is a former, he was, he's a former DG, DG of Ruasa. Ruasa exactly. has to do with water uh, supply mm. in the state, uh, mostly in the rural area. Ruasa has to do with rural water supply. Mm. And uh, people feel that um, because of his nature of work in his former position, supplying water in the rural areas, mm -hmm. he was able to get in touch with the people mm -hmm. and uh, he make his impact felt. Mm -hmm. Secondly, 
he is running in the position the second time. He was the one, he was the one that he, I mean, he was the one that was fielded as candidate of the APC in the 2019 House of Rep election. Even though they had internal party issues and the, the deceased, the one that uh, died and the position became vacant, you know, took the position. But Engineer Manero was the one that, uh, that flew the, t the ballot paper under APC. This time around, again, for a second time, it's not new. Would that have contributed in winning the election? Would this, would this margin uh, uh, over half, uh, over, you know, 50%? Exactly. Yeah, he Most scored, 50, sorry? 30. He scored, yeah, um, 34,958. 34, and the person that came, 16,291. Look at the gap. Would that be the reason why, you know, he maintained that uh, that, that big gap? Well, uh, I told uh, uh, some of my colleagues, I say, the, in this election, the most luckiest man is uh, Manir. Because uh, if you look at it, the DG Ruasa, he, he hold that position he, yeah, he, yeah. he held. Uh, then he really used it, utilized it, uh, very well because entering Larry from the roadside the only thing you keep seeing is boho ruasa 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 that's why even the people at the pulling unit uh, some uh, some of them will come and the only influence that you could have upon uh, 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 on them is uh, is that person that gave us boho yeah this uh, water so sand line exactly is that person that gave us boho she may have one more number you know is that person so even the the mothers that came out to vote the old people that came out uh, to vote uh, i saw it in that form they are they are stranded but the only thing that we quickly remind them on who to vote is the ruasa something so this is also a lesson to other people that are held that are holding on to uh, uh, positions, political position. Do it well. Make sure your people are represented in whatsoever you find yourself doing. Because later on you will. It's either you reap good or you 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 shed tears. <laughs> Meaning that um, he lived up to his bill on effective representation at the worst when he was digital. Ex exactly. Exactly. Okay, I mean that is equally like a sign that when he goes to the House of Reps, mm. uh, you know, they expect effective representation. Well, they can't say they expect effective representation because the, them together. Uh, uh, because the Ruasa is not his... Uh, Ruasa is an executive position. Exactly. While this one is elective position. Uh, yes, yes. yes. Well, so, you know, to get uh, uh, contracts and other things uh, uh, for your people, you have to work hard. You have to be highly uh, intelligent and also intellectually sound. Even though their job and they, uh, as lawmakers mm -hmm. is about lawmaking and oversight. Exactly. Exactly. Of oversight functions. Exactly. Okay, now let's look at a cursory look at the, uh, the score of other political parties. You have ABGA uh, score 125 votes, PRP 225 votes, and the third party, YPP, Young Progressive Party, you know, uh, had 294 votes. Mm. Look at the disparity. Mm. Too wide. What if from that? Do you mean that we just, we have, uh, is it true that we have two political parties? Uh, Not uh, multi-party uh, 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 party system? Well, it's, uh, it's uh, gradually uh, playing itself here. Yeah? that uh, the only two strongest political parties uh, in this country uh, is uh, the, the PDP and the APC. But uh, definitely that's not the party system we run here in, the, in, uh, in Nigeria. The constitution has allowed multiple parties, 100 parties, we have 90 something political parties uh, uh, before now, and uh, somewhere at the registered. The only advice I will have to the other political parties is that they need to work hard. Put on your structure, uh, main business. Let it not just be, I, I, I have the party, 
and uh, nothing is being done about I'm not doing anything to improve the party. And you need to sell this political party to the people at the grassroots. Let the party not just remain at Kaduna. Go down to the world, make sure you have your structure, and uh, you will make waves in the coming elections. But putting the margin, the margin is is about, uh, is talking. we are talking about thousands. Now talking about working hard. Yes, sir. We are looking forward to the local government election, which will come up uh, in less than um, three weeks. Oh, yeah, in two weeks' time, put it September 4th. So, with this lot, I mean, vote a party that we witness in Sabongari and Leri, how do we improve that in the local government election? Because it's in the same polling unit, the same constituencies, that this uh, election will be conducted by the same people. Well, this will be a total uh, different uh, uh, election. And this is a local government uh, election and also councillors. Definitely we will experience a Where chairman and councillors will be elected. Exactly. We will experience a turnaround. I know definitely the people, the issue of farming does not even arise. The issue of farming season does not even arise. You will see the how, how people will come out in mass to vote the the, 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 the the candidate of their choice. Because it's about um, the third tier of government. Exactly. Which is the kindergarten of democracy. Exactly. And people are so much interested in that. We have people contesting councillors. They are our friends. They are your friends. They are people at the grassroots that you see them. Even after the election, you keep seeing them. They can't go anywhere. They can't pack their loads and move to Abuja. They are still there with you. So the people are so much interested in this uh, 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 local government elections. So you will see a total uh, game turning around. Wow, okay. Yeah. Um, talking about a total game of turning around. Yeah. Let's hear from the listener. How, they, I mean, let's get their take on the Lere by election. Mm -hmm. Let them contribute on the post more time and um mr job can you give us the number the listener the number <coughs> to make their own contribution mm -hmm. all right uh, to make your contributions on the program you can call the studio lines on 081 40 989 081 40 989 and you can call line 2070 87 800 989 070 87 800 99 and you can also drop your comments on the invicta social media handle down facebook that's uh, invicta fm 98.9 and ango you have a call yeah hello uh good morning my brother yeah good morning who are we speaking yeah, to also, you yeah, also engineer manuel yeah engineer manuel what's your contribution hello yeah hello we're hearing you okay i think it's rather unfortunate uh what happened just the way you're just analyzed that you saw people uh giving money buying votes is rather unfortunate. When will Nigeria wise up? Knowing that these people that they are elected into a uh, political office does not have their interest for what? I have to believe that after all that Nigerians are passing through, that APC will come on board and people will vote them into office. And, and I, 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 the thing is, I'm just surprised. Because what happened is, uh, in the other election that PDP won, it was because of the, they saw that the hardship that uh, this present administration have brought to people. That's why they said let them remove APC. But this one now that happened. When I had got the result, I was think I I I, I smelled all play. But I stand to be corrected. Everybody has his own choice. If the people think that they want to sell their right just in a platter of gold, maybe just for a peanut, and they should keep suffering. So they should keep going ahead and vote uh, this because. So in all indication, this administration, this APC of a thing, me, I look at it as if they came to inflict pain to the masses. Because we can't believe the way and manner things are going through and people will say they want to go to office. Honestly, okay. uh, I'm still surprised. Okay. But I hope that the opposition, let them be wise up again. Okay. With all these things that he said, can they go to court? Because I don't know even the cost, my, I didn't even think it matters. Because well, you will see reality. Security agent that's supposed to stop such things from happening. Yeah. They will even begin to play, Thank play you. game with them. Thank you, Engineer Manuel, for Good your morning, contribution. My Good morning. Thank you for your contribution. Yeah, hello? Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Who are you on to? Good morning to my Oga. Yeah. Yeah, go uh, ahead. It's Pius calling you from Malali, Kaduna. Okay, Pius from Malali. 
yes, we have seen what happened in Lere. Uh I would just want to ask some uh, questions. I want my Ogadia please to kindly uh, tell Nigerians his own assessment on the rate of vote buying compared to those that voted based on their own interest. What is the percentage? As you said, that is one. Second, how can he rate the uh, how can he rate INEC in the red election? Thank you. Thank you for that for those questions. Yeah, still waiting for your calls. Hello? Yes, good morning. Yeah, good morning. Who's on the line? How are you? Fine, thank you. Who's on the line? I did put by the name. I did? Hello? Hello, you said who is on the line? What's your name? Yes, I did put, I did put by the name. Okay, right. Go ahead. I like the program going today. Okay. The election in the Sabogiri and uh, Leri. Yes. Is to show you that uh, Nigeria is united. Nigeria is I've united. I've been one of your program before. <laughs> yeah, you said it shows that Nigeria is united. <laughs> oh, your line is uh, screeching. Can you call back, please? Is that Adiku? Yes. Can you, you may use the call back. Hello, good morning, Angu Bale and all the guests in the studio. Yeah, good morning. How are you? Who are we on to? My, uh, my name is Comrade Gabriel Texama. Okay, Comrade. In fact, first of all, we have to congratulate the peaceful conduct of the election by Annex. All right. And commend also the security agents. Okay. And we believe if they carry on like this, the question of buying vote or not buying vote, definitely the election is going to be very, very successful. And we pray Annex will keep to that. Right. Because the whole thing is from Annex. If they keep their own time, just as you know, in the studio, definitely everything is going to go okay. And the vote buying, we yes. don't know if the security, I don't know whether the security were able to arrest some people if they didn't. This should serve as a decision by next election that it's like the local government they are going to conduct. Mm-hmm. They should open their eyes and make sure that anybody that make sure that is giving out money, he can be arrested. We are also praying that uh, the forthcoming uh, local government election, people should vote candidates. With what happened even in the last election, I think if they candidate, they voted for not even party. Maybe he has the potential to be in APC, that's why he won. So we should go on candidate and make sure that we, Nigeria, voted. We know the challenges if this country is facing. But I think with this election, another election coming, maybe things are going to be corrected. Thank you for giving this good opportunity. Oh, thank you for your contribution. Yeah, hello? hello? Good morning. Good morning. Who is on the line, please? Uh, thank you. And uh, Bali, good day. Yeah, good morning. How are you? Thank you very much. I greet you. I guess my name is Musa Bala and I greet you, Victor family. Thank Musa Bala, you're welcome. What's your Thank you very much. Uh, a well analysis about the effort made by Annex so far to conduct credible elections based on people's wish. Uh, in as much as we request Annex to do more, we should also encourage ourselves individually, the citizens, the political parties, to ensure that we abide by the rule of the game. Right. When we don't buy vote, nobody will sell vote. It is not ANEC that is buying vote. It is the people that are buying vote and political parties. Right. And it is not ANEC that is selling vote, or rather the political parties, the politicians, and the followers. Uh, my question to your guests, we have seen some politicians in Nigeria are insisting on electronic transfer of uh, uh, election results. Yes. Uh, judging by what happened in 2019 general election, when we saw some politicians already uh, made up their own result on a server that never exists, meaning that they have already calculated and hacked whatever they want to hack uh, and produce uh, results. Please, Mr. Mr. Bala, please don't deviate from the topic. We are, I'm not deviating. It's yes. about election and I need. Yes, I just want to add a postponement of, of Lere election, what is not, not the 2019 election, please. What is his opinion about the people that are calling? For electronic transfer of results, okay. I've been seeing the way people are hacking the internet and change anything they want to change, like they are doing in the bank. Thank you very much. All right, thank you for your question. Okay, um, 
we come back to our guest to take uh, for him to respond to some of these questions. Ambassador John Yayok, Secretary General, Polling Unit Ambassador of Nigeria, Puan. Uh, we have questions from Engineer Emmanuel Yayok. Uh, sorry, Engineer Emmanuel. Um, we have Pius from Malali. We have Adiku, even though his line was not okay. We couldn't hear um, exactly where he was going. Comrade Gabriel, Texas man, and Nikoli Musabala. Everything borders on vote buying. Though Comrade Gabriel, Gabriel the Texas man, uh, commended INEC for the peaceful conduct of the election. Though the vote buying is still at the uh, do are the phone burner of allegation, not proven. Mm. So, please respond to these questions. Well, uh, to start with it, uh, seriously, INEC did very well. And, and briefly, you have two minutes. Okay, okay. okay. INEC did very well. Kudos to INEC. We we mm -hmm. never expected this to display, mm -hmm. but uh, it, uh, it did. Thank you so much uh, for, for that. And uh, again, vote buying, I will say, is uh, about 70% because we have seen it clearly displayed, been displayed at the polling units and at some point even uh, uh, by the road you see people calling people this amount is for you go and vote so it's uh, probably about 70 percent and uh, it should be discouraged all political parties and candidates should stood up begin to do something that uh, will make people uh, genuinely love them and also cast their votes for and what should you watch out for the local government election coming up september 4th well uh we should watch out for mass turnout we should watch out for people voting at will we should watch out for people uh, uh being sensitized to watch the right candidate of their choice willingly the political the opposition political parties have given INEC 80 percent mm. pass mark mm. so what do we expect from sicom being casicom under the control of the state government? What do we expect from them? Well, we, we, we expect transparency also from them. We expect to see them play, displaying uh, sincerity in, the, in everything they, during the, the election process. And uh, we expect them to give a free hand for the process to go successfully. That's our expectation. But anything on the contrary, you know, uh, We'll not be taking. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so Ambassador much. Ambassador John Yayok. Yeah. Ambassador John Solomon Yayok, yeah. Secretary General, Polling Unit, Ambassadors of Nigeria, Puan, mm. for sharing your thoughts. Thank you. Having been at the field, mm. you're, you're here to relay your experience. Exactly. And um, listeners, we've been talking about, or we've been taking a post-mortem of the Larry mm. House of Representatives by election, which took place last Saturday. Um, I'm sitting in for the usual host, Tony Alabi. Tomorrow, we expect Tony Alabi to be on perspective. Thank you for listening. And goodbye.